lukewarm can be extremely urgent. Okay, um, I got that while sleeping. Um, I was having a dream, and upon waking from that dream, um, I don't remember the dream, but I remember those words. So that word was given as I was waking, so I would remember it. Um, and that was done April 4th. It was a Thursday, April 4th, 2024 at 2 23 AM. And I, I don't really want to give interpretations from that, but the feeling that I got was, um, that you can seem on fire for the Lord you can seem to have a relationship you can see them on fire and they move and they're right beside you saying, yes, we need to do this and have the Christian walls and we need to, um, like they're fighting right beside you in the same, same fight or same trenches or just anyone, anyone, not just, you know, politicians or anything like that, but anyone in the church seems like they're right with you, right? Um, walking the same path on the same course and they're on fire, but then you realize something happens and they're not kind of like the shaking happens and it crumbles and you see like the wolf in sheep's clothing or, you know, or Paul says, if they were of us, they'd still be with us. Like they'd still be walking with us. Um, Sorry, that's my, <laughs> that's our little puppy. Um, but yeah, don't judge ever off of others. Just your relationship with God is a personal thing. Your relationship with Jesus and, and focus on that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't look around at what others and what they seem like and how they're doing and how wonderful you think they are or um, because that can crumble if something happens and then you realize, wait, what? They're not what I thought. Then it can crumble you, but don't let it crumble you. Stay strong in Jesus. Only worry about your relationship with Jesus, you know, only only focus on what you're doing. You can help others and you can have, um, help them in their faith and their, in their walk. Um, but you really need to, you know, like it just says, don't envy, don't covet, don't covet other things that you see other people. Um, Oh, I wish I was more like them and they know all the scriptures and they do, they do so much for the church and for the people and for God. And, um, you know, you also have the verses, you know, where it says, where Jesus goes, you know, they said, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? And he says, depart from me. Um, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Um, so make sure your, your eyes are only focused on you and Jesus. We go out, we spread the good news. We spread the gospel. We help our fellow you know, our, our fellow brethren and, um, sisters in Christ and, you know, the church and you, and you walk, it's a walk that you have with the Lord, but don't, you know, envy and don't, um, judge your life upon other people's and where you think they are and they're higher up. Um, only God knows the heart. Why in the world is Mike Johnson sitting down and having a conversation with Zelensky? What, what is Mike Johnson thinking? When, when the former speaker...
Speaker of the House left, Nancy Pelosi was doing the exact same thing. She was worshiping Zelensky. And she was feeding the military industrial complex that continues to feed into destroying the lives of innocent people, not just in Ukraine, but all over the region. Don't get me started on this. This is crazy. Folks, this is absolutely crazy. This is, this is beyond a lot of people's capacity to be able to fully reconcile, including my own. I mean, how in the world can you compute the amount of savagery that's gone on so far and the devastating effects of it all? And Mike Johnson has no problem sitting with him and having this conversation. Fine, Mike. It's your prerogative, but don't tell me you're being led by the Lord. Because right? he's completely disconnected with what we want. Do you think he is being blocked with? I have no idea. I, I can't comprehend, Tucker, what radically changes a man. I mean, if we break yeah. down the, the second part of basically an omnibus, let's let's break that down. So Mike Johnson is, is pro-life. In the second part of the omnibus, just less than two weeks ago, he funded full-term abortion clinics. Full-term abortion clinics. Do you hear that? You guys hear that? The Speaker of the House, who used to be so-called anti-abortion, has now chosen to put a bill in front of the people that get signed that funds full-term abortion. Like, super, super critical that we understand this. Okay, watch this. Next. He funded the trans agenda on children. I mean, how does that even happen from a Christian conservative Republican speaker? Did you hear that? He funded the trans agenda on children. Mike Johnson, Christian Speaker of the House, who brags about his walk with the Lord. Shame on you, Mike Johnson. Richard Dawkins has just come out as a Christian, a special sort of Christian. I must say, I was slightly horrified to hear that Ramadan is being promoted instead. I do think that we we are culturally a Christian country. Um, I call myself a cultural Christian, I'm, I'm not a believer, but there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian, and so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols, and um, I, I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos, I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down, uh, and I, I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we, certainly, if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. For the last 40 years, for the last 40 years, you've been zealous to destroy the faith of Christians. Like a religious zealot, you've done it through every means possible. And now you have to tragically reap what you've sown. How much is it? 